Hi everyone, welcome to Home Cooking with Food Land. We're excited to have everyone here. Um, I wanted to start by letting everyone, well, letting the group here know that I did get some pictures of the luau stew that was done last week from people that did it at home and it was looked delicious. And so thanks for sending your pics. Um, the other thing I wanted to just do a shout out to was is to uh, is Betty Shimabukuro because she wrote a really cool article about what we're all doing here together, which is uh, our home cooking class and, and kind of like talks about what we do here. So for those of you that have been loyal followers of our episodes, and it's amazing how many we've done, I appreciate you guys all coming back every week. Um, it's a lot of fun for us. We really enjoy it. And we, what we really enjoy is, well, part of it's showing you folks how to cook, but we really enjoy the, the back and forth that we have, the questions you folks ask in the Q&A, the emails we get. So please keep sending us pictures. Please keep asking the questions and we really, really, really enjoy them. So thanks everyone. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so last week, we did beef luau, and I was thinking about what could we do this weekend. And interestingly enough, um, we are promoting ulu or breadfruit in the stores in the produce department this week. And I thought it'd be really cool to work with it, even for me, something I'm not like, I don't use it very much, but uh, it really challenged me to think about what I could do with it. And there are a lot of different things you can do with it, and we'll talk about them. But I decided upon doing a really fun dish that I think everyone will, well, people will enjoy and you folks I think will enjoy and it's, you know, Thai curry. And so we're gonna do Thai curry. We're gonna add chicken, it's gonna do the protein. We're gonna add ulu, it'll be a really delicious dish. And we'll talk about ways you can sub in and out of it. But I think um, it allows me to show you how to use ulu, but it also shows me, lets me show you how to make a really nice curry. So the other thing that I was challenged with when I thought about how to do this class was, how do I show you how to make a dish that requires cooking time, right? So we're gonna do this like almost like I, 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 I channel my inner Alfred Hitchcock, right? So what I mean by that is I, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen and then we're gonna watch the movie, right? You see the ending first and then you see the movie to the ending later. So I've pre-prepped all of the ingredients here and then we're gonna go ahead and get the, the curry going and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna prep all the ingredients as if it would look right for making the curry. So I wanted to just kind of explain that to you. And you guys are so special to me that I'm willing to do the prep twice. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get to the stove and we'll start putting this all together. So here are the ingredients, pre-prepped, onions, bell peppers, carrots, eggplant, ulu, chicken, okay? And by the way, as I, I, I know I mentioned the Q&A function, if you have questions, please use the Q&A function to type in your questions and then we'll work through them. Either I have a really great crew of people that work with me that know a lot of answers and they'll answer them for you and they might pitch me some of the questions and I'll answer them for you live here. So it's, it's really a fun interactive ex experience. So I have a, there's a pot, a quart pot. Someone asked me last week, this is a Breville. I think it's a really cool pot. Um, it's anodized and it's, Great heavy weight, like I've talked to everyone about, you want a heavy weight pot, not a commercial for them. I really actually like this pot. So I am gonna add some oil to the bottom of this pot. It's been preheating. And I'm looking for the pot to, or the, the, the fat or the oil to put in here to have a nice sheen and sort of a ripple and it's starting to have that. One thing that people do, and you can do too, is if you're not sure if it's ready, take a piece of what you're gonna cook and put it in there. And you see how it's not really doing anything yet. It's a little, it's slightly sizzling, but it's not hot enough. I really wanted to get nice and hot because I'm gonna put all of these, I'm gonna put the carrots, I'm gonna put the bell peppers and the onions all in at one time. And if it's not hot enough, the pan will just never recover enough to be, get me to be able to sweat this. And by the way, I'm sweating this versus sauteing this. And so there's a difference between the two. Sweating means put it in the pan at a heat that allows you to kind of like get the vegetables translucent without color or caramelization. Sauteing, you're looking for caramelization. So we're gonna be sweating the product, okay? Tony, can you talk a little bit about the breadfruit? Yes. Um, breadfruit 
Is it, is it raw or did you pre-cook it? And how did you choose it? How do you choose breadfruit? Okay, yeah, well, so the breadfruit that I'm using here is raw. As you can see, you can see here. Um, and the ones that I chose, I mean, ultimately I was forced to choose what we had at our store, but the ones that we had, that we, that I chose were kind of grapefruit size. So you can get them in different sizes. They can get really, really big. Um, and when I, when we get ready to prep this, I'll show you about the differences in the breadfruit, but you can also get them raw. I mean, you can also get them frozen sometimes in the, in the supermarkets. We sell them raw. Um, but one other thing I was going to mention is you can also buy them, prep them, and freeze them. But we'll talk more about the breadfruit in a little bit. You can hear, I want, remember the sound, right? You can hear the sizzling sound, and it's a mild sizzling sound. And that's what I'm looking for because, like, yeah, I'm, I, want trans, I want translucency. I don't necessarily want a lot of color. And this is a reasonable sound. If it, was a, if it sounded really, like, high sizzling speed, then you know you're going to start getting browning, and that's not something that you want. I'm going to keep moving it, and you can start to smell the sweetness from the peppers and the onions and the carrots. One thing I wanted to know is, even when you're doing, if you're going to do beef stew at home, as an example, right? And beef stew typically has carrots, celery, and onions as a base. The onions and the carrots should always go in first, and in this case, I have carrots and onions. I did put peppers in. And that's okay because what I'm trying to do is start with all of the vegetables that have natural sugars in them. If I was making a stew, I would want those in first and I would want it hotter, but that would allow it, the vegetables to brown. Celery, as an example, has a lot of water and a lot of, not a lot of sugar. And if I added the celery at the same time, the water would start to come out and it would start to steam in the pot and it's, it competes with the browning process. So that's why if you're gonna make a stew at home, the celery would go in later. Okay, so it smells delicious. It's looking translucent. The recipe says five to eight minutes. Uh, you can do the five minutes, five, you know, you can work with the time. I'm gonna accelerate the process a little bit so that we can get this going. But the next step is, right, adding the eggplant, which is starchy. It's not going to brown. It brown a little bit. And now I'm going to add the ulu into the pot. And the ulu, if you don't have ulu, you can use potato. Ulu is starchy. So potato is, 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 a, is, a, good, is a good substitution for the ulu, okay? And I'm going to stir this. And I want all of it to start to come together. This is, Letting all the flavors marry. And then later, can you explain um, how- Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Oh. You guys are supposed to be watching with me and say, hey, when are you gonna put the, when are you gonna put the, uh, the curry paste in? Okay, so I'm gonna rewind. I, I, I put all this in right now, right? If you're going to do this like legit the way I said, you would put the curry paste in to kind of fry it first. So I'm going to cheat this. I'm going to let you, so you're going to see like human beings, you can make a, you can, you can make, you can forget stuff. And sometimes in some instances you can recover. So in this case, I'm going to put it in now. But if I was doing it the right way, I would have put it in the beginning so I can kind of fry the curry paste so that you can get all of the, the smells out, you know, the uh, the volatile oils to come out. And this is a, I'm using Thai Kitchen. Maypo is another great brand you can use. We sell it in some of our stores, not all of them. And I'm using green curry here, okay? Green curry tends to be milder. You can use yellow or red. I, I typically only use green and red. Red is, is definitely gonna be giving it some heat. But the reason why you typically, you want to fry the curry paste usually in the beginning is it helps to bring the, like I said, those, the flavors out of the curry paste itself. I'm moving it around so the curry is getting a chance to kind of saute a little bit in the heat of the pan. So it's still going to taste great.
Can you talk a little bit about how to know when the breadfruit is cooked? Yeah. Um, you know, is it soft? Is it al dente? So that's a preference thing. When you'll know the breadfruit is done, it should feel tender, right? Now, it, you should, it should be like, I would say not al dente, but it should not fight the tooth. And that means when you bite into it, it should yield easily. That means it's done. And it's very similar to, if you think about a potato, it just reacts the same way. The done is to like how you like your potatoes, you'll be fine. Okay. So that is looking great. Now I'm gonna add the coconut product. And I wanted to show you this. We do have a product that we just launched in our stores. It's our Maikai Organic Coconut Cream. And we have both coconut cream and coconut milk. And I'll show you the, the other one, but the difference between the cream and the milk is the percent fat. This is 22% fat. And, I, and I'm putting it in here because I want a nice rich curry. You can use the coconut milk if that's what you're, it's all you're able to get, which is fine. Um, it just has, a, it's just a richness difference, right? It's like the difference between whipping cream versus heavy cream, right? So we're gonna add the, we're adding some of that in there and then I'm gonna add some stock. As I believe the recipe is one and a half cups. So I'm gonna use this as an, just to measure and to get all the extra cream out, one and a half cups we're gonna put in here. And I'm gonna, it's, it, I had this at high, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of turn it down because I want this to lightly simmer, okay? What's nice about doing curry or, you know, Thai curry is it's, it's relatively simple. There's some prep involved, but once you got the prep done, it's as simple as getting everything in the pot, like sweating it and getting your, and getting your curry nice and seared so that the, the oils start to come on, the flavor starts to imbue. And then you add your coconut milk or cream. And then you uh, add some, you can add water or you can add stock. Now, one thing to, you know, I, what's cool about this too is you could do this and, and have it be a vegetarian or vegan option, right? If you did not add chicken and you did not chick, use chicken stock, you could have a really delicious vegan meal here. Yeah, you could make vegetable broth or you could use water um, and just omit the, veg, the, the chicken, if you wanted some of that umami and richness, you could add like mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, all that, all that even abudage gives you umami and it gives you a meaty texture if that's what you're looking for. The other thing that I like about this dish here that we're, we're showing you is that the vegetables that I chose are, I think you are commonly found in, in this type of curry, but you could do add things like, um, you know, baby corn, you can use zucchini. There's a lot of different things you can do with vegetables in here and still have a really delicious, um, delicious curry. And right now I'm really smelling that coconut and I'm smelling all of the different aromatics and spices that go into the curry. So we'll let, the, I have this on low now. I'm turning this to low and we're gonna let it very slowly simmer. And then we're gonna come and do some prep and then we can talk story more about the dishes, the, the, the ingredients, and we can talk more about ulu. Does the coconut milk curdle if it's overheated? You know, I've seen instances where sometimes it, um, it might break a little bit, and I was concerned about that. Um, it's looking good right now. I've seen, you know, it's a, it's a decision you're going to have to make if, if that matters to you, but I, I think um, right now it's looking good. I also think the acidity matters, right? So if you add, if there's too much acid in there, that also helps with this, with the, or causes it maybe to, to separate or break. Um, but I also think the fat content matters too. So, you know, I was just so you can see, this is coconut milk and coconut milk, see, as you can see, this one has 18% fat. And then the coconut cream is 22% fat. If you're talking about coconut milk and like if you're getting at the other brands in our stores, it's closer along the lines of the 18%. And so as it pertains to the breaking factor, I think you wanna make sure you're using a high quality coconut milk, which has enough fat to be able to keep it emulsified from breaking. So let's talk about ulu. Um, 
so this is what ULA looks like. This one is, this was picked from, I believe, well, we got some locally from uh, uh, a local farm called Frankie's on Oahu, but we also got some from the Big Island too. There's a ULU, uh, there's a co-op that's happening and this is a breadfruit. And what's interesting is I was doing research, uh, this is used a lot in like, in the, in the Caribbean, in the Philippines, so they use it in all different ways, but really it's a starchy, it's a starchy fruit and you can use it like a potato. Um, you can puree it really fine and make hummus with it. And you can also make poi with it. One thing you gotta be mindful, if you're gonna puree it, it, it does get gummy. So if you really puree it heavy, it might become gummy like uh, poi. So if you're gonna make it for like mash, you have to, don't overwork it. Now to prep a ulu, you treat it like a melon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the top off. I'm gonna cut the base off. And what I'm doing now is I'm creating it, it stands nicely. And so if you've never done a melon, this would be a good training class for how to, how to clean and peel a melon or a pineapple too, right? Pineapple, you take the top off, do the same thing. And it, it's creating a, a, a board so it's not moving around and it's stable for you. Now you wanna do, we're gonna cut the skin off around it. And we wanna follow the melon, I mean, sorry, the, the ulu in, a, in, a, in the curve pattern so we don't waste. And I just want to take the thick part off. See how I'm trying to really keep as much of the starchy part on the melon and I'm just very thin skin that's coming off here. How do you know this is ready to use? Um, how do you know it's not, I mean, how do you know it's ready? Not under, right? Yeah, under? that's a good question. I mean, I'm at the mercy of, what we offer in our stores and typically i would say at this size you're okay you 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 know you're you're good and then bigger is better i mean not better but bigger is even more usable um but you're gonna have to just trust that the person that's picked them knows what they're what they're doing unless you have a tree in your yard so if you have a tree in your yard i mean i would say you want to look for like grapefruit or bigger is probably where you want to be at Upside is if you get you have one of these trees in your yard, then you can like you should know because by the process of experimentation, like oh that one was too small, too can, hard. Can you tell us the difference in taste with this versus the what does it taste like versus potato? Uh, sweet potato. Well, sweet potato. I mean, I, I don't. Know, it, it's it, sweet potato has that sweetness, right? It's earthy and sweet. A potato is just earthy, soily, so I have a soil component to this. So the difference is like, to me, a, sweet, a potato tastes, it reflects the soil, it grows in the soil, so it has that very, like if you think about when you go outside in your yard and it has just rained, that smell of the earth, right? Where this, the difference in this one, it smells very, it smells green. It smells, it smells I guess, there's a chlorophyll, um, starchy component to this, component to this, so it's not, earthy in the same way that a potato is. It's also just a very neutral flavor. So if you think about a blank canvas, you think of vanilla ice cream that can take chocolate sauce, you can do a whole lot of different things with it, but it's very, very, very neutral. And if you think about like rice, white rice, carol's rice, very neutral versus jasmine rice, which is fragrant, right? So it's very, very, very neutral. Okay, so we peeled it and I'm gonna cut it in half now. I don't want to see what's inside. So there's a core and the, the core varies, meaning you might get a tender one or a hard one. In this case, you can see how woody that is, right? And that is something that I'm not gonna really wanna eat. I'm, I'm looking for all this tender, really spongy product. So if you feel that your ulu, you want the spongy piece, the spongy part. So I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna cut it down one more time. And we can see that, right? You can see all that core. What I'm gonna do is take, it's just, I'm gonna treat this like a, like almost like if, if you're gonna do apples, right? If you wanna take the seeds out, I'm gonna take my paring knife in here. And I'm gonna cut that out. And this is all the edible pieces. Very, it's very soft and pliable here.
Now, ulu is really interesting. It's a really interesting vegetable, and there, I, there's a big push to get like ulu flour. People are they're making ulu flour um, as an alternative. I, and, and the thing about ulu is that it's a really interesting vegetable because it grows very prevalently and it has very high yields. And so, if that's if it's something that we can develop in a way that we can get more people to eat it, I think it can be really it can really help with the food chain, the food system. So this is all a piece that's ready to go. Now you could take this and you could bake them. You could put butter on them. You could bake them like a baked potato and you could finish them like a baked potato. You can take these and you can boil them and you can mash them. You can also take these and then boil them till they're very tender and freeze them. So there's a lot of, it's a very versatile um, product that you can use and you can, it's it's so neutral that it will take on the characteristic that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these. Is it absorbent, like tofu? Uh, I would say I would say yeah. I would definitely absorb, and you can feel it. You can see how the fibers of this thing it it will it would pick up the flavors. It would if you marinated it, the flavors would really whatever you're marinating it would would go right into this. And do you store this at room temperature like potatoes? Uh, I would put it in the refrigerator. Uh, I think it, it, you can put it at room temperature. It start. It might start to blacken, but I would refrigerate them. But the nice thing about these, so far, what I've my experience has been those. I'm gonna cut these. You know, if you put cut a potato and you let it sit out, it starts to turn black because it's oxidizing. These will not oxidize. And there's a little, it's a little, my hand's a little bit sticky, just tacky, but it's not like itchy, like we talked about the taro last week. You just gotta be able to be, be ready for that, okay? Can you do this using a peeler, vegetable peeler? You know, I would not, you, you can, can try, try, but the thing that I would, the challenge is your peeler, if you peel it, it depends on your peeler, but it might not take enough of the skin off. So you can, if you want, if you have a peeler, you can try, but I feel like I want to get more of that skin, that outer layer off so that I can get to the tender part. Can you eat this raw? I don't know if technically, I think technically you probably can eat it raw, but I don't know if it's pleasurable to eat it raw. I don't think there's, I don't think there's a sap or like the taro thing that's going to affect you in the same way, but I don't think it's just, I just don't think it's very, it's probably not very pleasurable. Can you use breadfruit in regular stew instead of potato? And is breadfruit available year round? Breadfruit is available year round. Um, I don't know if it's, a, I mean, we just started selling it and we want to, I think we want to build a following for it. So, um, but yeah, I think in general, you should be able to get it year round. Um, you can totally use it to make stew. I thought about doing beef stew with ulu but i figured last week i used beef to make the luau and it was too similar but you could totally make you we make, make a hawaiian one. stew at one of our store at foodland farms ala moana and sometimes at pro city and we put ulu in it and people just go crazy for it so yeah someone said that ulu chowder is super ono ulu chowder sounds great too again it's like anything you want to use a potato for great you can make fries with this great i mean chips i was i thought i was going to do a class like Ulu hummus, ulu fries, baked ulu, but that's just like getting crazy. So I thought I would just focus on one thing that, that I could do well for you folks. Let's take a look at what our stew is looking like. I'm sorry, our curry is looking like. And you can see that it's coming together really nicely. It smells great. It smells like coconut, but you see, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but the coconut cream, I think is really good. It gives it really nice body, real nice creamy texture. And this is really, it's looking really good too. Okay, we're gonna do some onion real quick. I cut the tops off, I, you know, I, there's never a shortage of onion demos, I feel like. So I cut the ends off. We're gonna peel off that outer skin. And this is a sweet onion. So it has less of that sulfur and you'll cry less by using it. And it'll just, it's just got more sugar. It'll taste, it'll get some milder experience, okay. So here's the root end, top end. I'm gonna dice this. And for this particular dice, I want large dice. So I'm going to cut it partially to the root end and stop. Then I'm going to cut straight down. And then we're going to go across it. Then I'm going to 
if the root was really big, I would cut it like that to keep the root off, throw that away. And then we have all of our nice onion dice here. I'll put that over there. I'll finish this one here. Again, coming down, one, two, three. You can see the root again here. So there, that's the that's the, the part that doesn't get used, right? So we have a very good yield on our onion. Can you remind us, um, did you just put the curry paste in without any seasoning? You, you didn't put salt, sugar, lime. I did not put any salt, sugar, or lime. And so I, 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 I was supposed to put the paste in with the oil in the beginning to start to fry that to get the flavors to come out. Then put the vegetables in to, and bring it and build those layers of flavor. I forgot. So I put the paste in kind of after all the veg in, but I did not add any of the other things that you talked about. Now, when we get to the other side and I taste this, if I feel like it needs more, one or the, I might add, I could add sugar. Um, I could add more, I'm gonna add herbs. I'm gonna taste it if it needs acidity, I might add some of that. The other thing that I add sometimes, if it's not where I want it to be, I add more curry paste, but the other thing I can add is more, if I have lemongrass, I add that. If I, if I have ginger, I might add that because I'm trying to get this really rich you know, flavor to come out. So I use half of the eggplant that's in there already. And basically all I'm gonna do is take this half eggplant and cut it into half moons. And this is a Japanese eggplant. And notice, I want you to notice the sizing that I'm doing here. There's, there's a very similar relative sizing. And that's very important when you're cooking because the cook times all, you wanna keep sort of a relativity in the cook times. If they were all, to get big and tiny pieces, they would all be done at different rates. And that's not always the best thing. Carrot, we're gonna go ahead and cut that up. So we'll go ahead and peel that. Over. I have a, a question for you. Yeah. A good question. Did you use Hawaiian ulu or Samoan ulu? That's a really good question that I can't answer specifically because I don't know the difference between if there's a if there's a um, species difference, but I guess I would say it's Hawaiian because it came from Hawaii. But I don't. Is it, you can tell me is there a there is there a species difference between Samoan to Hawaiian ulu, or is it like Hawaiian ulu is really Samoan ulu because when you trace the migratory path of the Hawaiian culture, they started it, it, that's where we came from, right? So I don't know. You tell me. So I believe we saw Hawaiian ulu, but. There's also ma'afala, is a Samoan variety. It's smaller and less dense than the mm -hmm. Hawaiian ulu, so it's a lighter option. There you go. And then there's also pu o, Samoan and Tongan variety. It's large and round with a light texture, similar to ma'afala. But I believe at Fulan, we sell Hawaiian ulu. Thank you. Carrots, I cut them on a bias. And then uh, this is the one I, I like to show everyone because you know people cut bell peppers in lots of different ways, right? And so I'm gonna show you how I cut a bell pepper and it, it, it really maximizes the yield, I think. So you go, I'm gonna cut just the, the, the bottom off and then I'm gonna cut the top just as much, just the very, the very top of it off, okay? And I'll flatten it out. Take the stem out and then I have two pieces here. I'll cut these in quarters. Cut these into smaller pieces. Okay, and then here's the part that I wanted to show you if you've not done it before. I, I cut it, the pepper down here, like I can make a slice into it. And you see the membrane where that is? I'm basically going to cut through the pepper. And so right now, this is the part that's going to go into the compost, I guess. And this is the part that is going to be edible. And when you think about 
red peppers, right? They're not cheap. So we're, we're capturing all of the, as much of the pepper in the yield so we can eat that. Why did you cut the carrots on the bias? Um, I cut the carrots on the bias. I know the recipes do do like cut them in half and make half moons. You know, the chefs, man, we never can decide. We're always changing our mind. But I cut them on a bias because I like the bias cut. I think when it cooks in the in the sauce, it'll get tender, and you just have it's just I like I just like the the, the shape that it creates. To me, like the half moon thing, I don't know. It just it's, I wasn't feeling it. Okay, more questions about ulu. Can you use ulu in a potato mac salad instead of the potato? And can you use jackfruit instead of ulu? You got cut out, Cheryl. Um, I would say you can use it in a potato mac salad. You can use it instead of the potato, which would work great. Um, shoot, I just blanked out. What was the second question? Can you use jackfruit instead of ulu? You know, you. I'm not, I don't use jackfruit a lot. I don't have a lot of experience with jackfruit. And it was interesting as I was researching this, this recipe and ulu in general, there are a lot, a lot of references to jackfruit. And I would say my gut is yes, you can, but you're gonna end up with a different experience because jackfruit has a whole specific, has a completely different flavor, right? Jackfruit has, it's like it has sweetness and it has tropical overtones. And so there's a way more complexity in the fruit. And so you can use it. You're just going to have a very different experience is what I would say. And, and we don't sell it in our stores, so you sh shouldn't use it at all. Come, let's try this. Okay, we're good here. So it's all coming together. It's looking nice. It's a really nice curry. Let me taste it real quick. I want to see if there's enough curry, that's why. Okay, so it, I, I think it tastes great. But to that point, I think it needs a little bit more curry. So I'm going to add some more curry paste to it because I want to punch this thing up, right? So I have some curry paste. The thing about cooking, right, is, is it's about uh, Start, a lot of times it's about starting and then making adjustments. So I'm going to add some more curry paste because I want more of that curry flavor. And this particular paste to me is milder than what I like to eat. So I'm going to add some of that. We're also going to finish this in a little bit with um, uh, a bunch of different, well, we got some, we got some basil, we got some cilantro, and I am going to add lime juice to this. I don't think it needs sugar, but if you like sugar and that's an important characteristic for you, a little sweetness, you can add that. You could also add some fish sauce. I'm gonna check one of these pieces of, this is a piece of ulu. Let's see how it looks here real quick. See how it cuts really nicely. And it looks like potato inside, right? Let me try one. So it's, it's cooked, but it's a little crunchy. I want it to go a little bit further. So I'm gonna turn the heat up. I wanna kind of try to speed up the cooking process a little bit so that we can, um, I can show you the finish this and we'll go here and finish a couple more things off. So chicken, these are boneless skinless breasts. And so, I'm sorry, boneless skinless thighs. So you have the fat here. If you like fat, leave them on, no problem. But what I'm gonna do is I just scrape it a little bit to kind of like get it to loosen up. Then I take the fat off, get down here. You see how it kind of just comes off on its own? that fat off here. I leave a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and cut them into pieces. You can, I'll cut this piece here. I'll probably cut it in half the long ways and then we'll cut small strips. Why didn't you cover the pot? Uh, because that way I, I wouldn't have to open it to look at it while we're cooking. You can cover it if you want. It, was, it, it helps. I mean, it helps keep the heat, um, consistent so you can cover the pot no problem but you don't necessarily have to um i will cover the pot when i'm trying to get something to boil or simmer or if i'm trying to maintain heat and it can't maintain heat on its own or if i'm trying to like if it's really smoky like a lot of creating a lot of smoke i'll cover it but in this case 
I'm okay with leaving it open because I can, when I'm checking it, it's a fast, I can just look quickly at it. And um, if you're using lemongrass, mm -hmm. um, when would you add that in? If I'm using lemongrass, I would add it in the beginning when I'm doing all of the onions and et cetera, because you, that's, that's the perfect time for it to, to get, let it get all of its essential oils out and get the fragrance to come to, to, to open up so that when you, when you make your curry, it goes, even ginger too. If you're going to add ginger too, that's when you should add it. Now keep in mind, there's, there is adjustment too, right? So if you decide that you need to adjust later on, you could technically throw lemongrass in um, later in the process, but it's just not as good or not as effective because you don't get the chance to let the heat like extract the essential oils when you're gonna sweat it basically. What brand of, what brand of cutting board is that? The cutting board I'm using is a booze block and those are pretty Why widely available. available. No, the plastic one. Oh, I don't know. It was from, I think it was from, uh, this is from a discount store, like like Ross or TJ Maxx. They had a pack of them. So that's that's where you can get those. Um, okay, so we've got, this is this is the prep, right? We've got all our, this is the, exactly what I started with. You can see what we started with. So that's what that looks like. I'm getting ready to, we're getting ready to wrap this, uh, our, our, our dish up. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice lime because I'm gonna use some to finish to add to this, but I'm also, I like to put some a little, a little bit for the, uh, on the side for people to add. I'm gonna add, take some cilantro here. And technically, right, again, all of this is usable. I just, I'm not, I happen to not gonna be, not use it today, but this is tender, a tender herb. So in your cooking, you're making guac or, you know, different dishes, you can totally use that, but I'm just gonna take some of this. I'm gonna rough chop it. And the recipe that I, I gave you also calls up for uh, Thai basil. And if you have Thai basil, great. But don't let that stop. If you can't if you can't get Thai basil, then just use regular basil, right? So I have regular basil here. Texture's different. Quite not as not quite as pungent in my opinion as uh, Thai basil, but still delicious, right? Can you tell us how you store your basil? You know I. If I'm, you know, when I'm buying basil from the store, it comes in a bag. I tip, typically leave it in a bag and I try to keep it in that bag in the refrigerator and I keep it in, in a drawer that's not too cold so it doesn't freeze. You got to keep an eye on it because it is delicate and it will turn black quickly. So you got to kind of use it fast. I've tried also, it helps is I'll cut the basil. I treat basil and herbs kind of like floral, right? And so when I bring it home, sometimes I'll cut the stems off and I'll wrap it with a, a damp paper towel, which kind of helps keep them hydrated. And one of the other enemies to herbs, delicate herbs specifically too, is, is moisture. So like cilantro, if I keep it in the bag, it helps keep it from drying out and wilting in the refrigerator. But if I don't keep track of the, of the herb and it starts to condensate in the bag, the condensation in the bag tends to rot the, the herb as well. So you have to kind of keep track of that. Occasionally, I'll take it, I might take it out of the bag, just like shake it out, shake the bag out to make sure there's not an over buildup of condensation. But I think the important piece is when you buy these kinds of fresh herbs, you should use them right away or freeze them or do something with them because even though you're trying to extend the, the life of the herb by taking care of it properly, over time, it just starts, the flavor starts to sort of dissipate. So that's kind of what I would, I would recommend. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Um, I can hear it simmering. I'm going to take this. This is a mixture of basil and cilantro. Can you tell us a little bit about the different yeah. styles of curry? Like, yeah. how is this different? Thai curry? How is Thai curry different from Indian curry, Japanese curry? Okay, so I'm not an expert on curry, but I'll tell you what I, what I do know. Um, and I've learned about Japanese curry because my son is like crazy about Japanese curry. Japanese curry is is similar like I use a, a similar Indian curry but one of the things that I've added to that is a sweetness to that and one of the ways you get in you get that in is by using similar things like if you think of tonkatsu sauce or curry uh like bulldog which is like a it's like a sweet plum fruit addition to the curry for Japanese curry um I gotta tell you I use SNV and that's like I love that stuff but I've tried to make it from scratch and usually I use uh like regular 
madras curry, but I have to add in something like a fruit component, which was I typically get from um, like food dog tonkatsu sauce. It didn't curry lots of different spices um, and different curry blends, different spice blends, depending on the region in India. Um, I think, you know, th there are different recipes in Southeast Asian cu cuisines, but the difference in those, what I find is like the addition of like ginger, galangal, Thai basil, and those kinds of things. And then, um, like for me, it's, it's the coconut milk is also something that makes a big difference. I try to think of Indian curries that I've had that have, I'm sure there are Indian curries that might have coconut milk, but I associate Thai curry with, you know, fish sauce, lime juice, the galangal, lemongrass, and those types of things into this overall spice blend that goes into the paste that's being made. We'll squeeze lemon juice in here. And then there's different, you know, we've got the red, the green, and the yellow. And those are different combinations, different formulations, but red typically is the hotter one. Um, green and yellow tend to be milder. Let me taste this real quick. Again, tasting is very important in the process. And it's coming together. I still think this needs a little bit more acidity. So I'm gonna add more lime juice. I'm gonna add more of the herbs into this. And you can, this is also to use, I'm gonna see if I have any, I'm trying to figure out if I, if I use it all up this weekend. But yeah, I did use it all up, but you could use, I, I think this could definitely use a little bit of fish sauce. So if you have fish sauce, I would put a shot in that. But here we have a really, what is a really, what I'm thinking is a really delicious curry. And again, if you have red curry, Yours is going to be tinted red. If you had yellow, it's going to be a little bit yellow. I'm adding a little bit of salt. But look at the texture here. And it, I really think that the um, the coconut cream has made a difference because it's kind of, that fat has really helped bind it together. But because it is more fat, I've had to punch it up with more herbs, more acid, and more curry paste to balance that richness. But it looks really, really, really good. So we're going to come to the, we're going to come to the front now. Let's go ahead and we'll plate some up. So I have a nice, I have a, one of, a bowl here. We'll put some in a bowl. Um, I've got some rice that I made. You can serve the rice on the side. Like in local style, we'll probably put rice in the bowl. This is um, brown jasmine rice. And I chose this because I think it's a good match. But I, like we talked about it in a couple classes ago, but this jasmine rice, this brown jasmine rice to me these days, the texture is really nice. It holds up well because of that still has that that brown that outer husk on there but it's really fragrant it really just smells amazing hey keone pete yes. wants to know if you've ever added beer to flavor the curry i have not added beer that's the first one for me i i I'm, i have never heard of that but how does that work out for you when you do it and yes. then betty wants to know if you if Adding fish sauce will change the flavor, and how would it change the flavor? Is it our Betty, our Crave Betty, or is this a different Betty? Different Betty. Oh, hi, Betty. Betty. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so what, what you're going to do, do when, when you're adding, adding the fish sauce, sauce you're adding, adding umami. umami, you're adding meaniness, and, and that's, that's what really kind of puts weight on the dish here. So you can see the ulu here, see carrots. You can see the little beads, it's a little bit broken. But that's what I see when I go to have curry in Thai restaurants. So I'd just, I like to just kind of move it around. Add some more herbs. If you could smell this, your mouth would be watering right now. And I'm trying not to gleek. So we'll put that on there. I'm gonna take my lime here, put it on the top, just for kicks, right? We're all about presentation, and since I have it here, I'll put a nice douche on here. And here we have our Thai chicken and ulu curry. And we, it's a green, it's a green one. We made a green curry with uh, we have a really nice brown jasmine rice. 
So you can use ulu or you could use potatoes. If you're gonna make this dish, you, you, you're you welcome to switch in and out different vegetables, experiment with them. You're welcome to um, do this in a vegetarian way. You can also add seafood. If you're gonna add seafood, I tend to add it in the end so that it just cooks through, it doesn't overcook. But this is a great base recipe you can use and you can continually experiment with it. Um, I th we're getting ready to wrap. Are there any last questions about this dish or cooking in general? Can you tell us again um, what you're looking for in the consistency of the ulu to know that it's done? Yeah, yeah so, so the consistency I'm looking for ulu is you want it, when you bite into it, it should not fight against your tooth. Your, your, your teeth should just go sliding right into it. Um, and you, in the same way that when you eat a potato, you want it to just yield when you bite into it. If you're, if you're biting to it and it feels, if you're having to fight it, it's not ready yet. The other term that we use is fork tender, which means if you take a fork and you push it in like right here, I'm gonna give you an example. Okay, this is raw, but it's fighting the fork, right? See, it's just nuts in the fork. If I push the fork into this one, it just goes right in, it, does, it just easily yields into that, okay? So you want fork tender, or you want it to be very easily tender when you bite into it. If it's still too hard, it's not ready yet. Some people are asking about chutney. Would you add a chutney to this, like a mango chutney? I mean, you technically could, um, but in my, in my, when I think about when I go to eat Thai food, I don't typically have it with a chutney, uh, but that sweet, that sweet tart would add to this. In my head, I think of a chutney as more something that would be for an Indian style curry. Uh, but if you wanted to, I think you could totally do that, yeah. Okay, and if you're using tofu instead of chicken, when would you mm -hmm. add the tofu? If you're gonna do tofu, I would recommend using firm tofu because if you use soft, first of all, when you put a silk in, you put it in, it would completely dissipate, you'd have like mapo tofu, which could be kind of cool. But if you're gonna do firm, if you're gonna do tofu or firm tofu, then I would dice it and once this is all ready, then I would put it in and I would lightly stir it to warm through. And if you wanted to, you could let it sit a little bit to try to let it absorb some flavor. But for me, the key thing is you, you want to be gentle with the tofu so it doesn't completely break up in the in the curry when you make it. Have you ever used kaffir leaves? Kaffir lime leaves is one of those ingredients that I think is in, is the key base is what a key base in a car in a in Thai curry. So I would say I would say yes because the curries that I typically use would have it in there. Um, if you're making your own, uh, you're definitely going to want to put it in there. If you happen to have access to kaffir lime leaves and you want to really punch up the flavor of this curry, if you're going to use a store-bought curry paste, I think it works great. What you want to do is take the leaves, right, and you line them up and you want to slice them very, very, very thin so that the flavor goes in. But if you if they're too thick, then when you eat them, they might be too leathery. So you want to slice them very, 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 very thin, and then put them into your curry. And I would put them in the beginning, like when I would put the lemongrass, so that I can extract the essential oils and get the flavor into the curry. And when I cook it, it helps tenderize the little tiny slivers of of kaffir lime that I put in there. Any, Any other questions? questions? Uh, could you uh, microwave the ulu? Uh, for a little bit and then add it to the pot. You could microwave the ulu and add it to the pot. I wouldn't in my, because that just added another step. But like to, to me adding, microwaving the ulu takes another dish and time versus me just throwing it in the pot and letting it cook for five more minutes longer. So to me, the trade-off's not there and I'm lazy. So um, I would just throw it in the pot. But if you wanted to, if you had a bunch of extra ulu, like you, got, you, you, you need this for the curry and you bought two and you got this one here, you could microwave it, right, or boil it. And when it's cool and it's cooked, throw it in the freezer for next time when you're ready for it. So microwaving is a good technique. I just maybe, if I'm gonna make a curry, I would not microwave it because I'm already gonna take, it's not much longer to cook it by, I'm not picking up that much more time by microwaving it in my opinion. Anything else? Can you remind everyone about our schedule? I will. I will. Okay, so the last thing I want to let everyone know is that um, we've had we've, we had a we've had a, a, a ton of fun a ton of fun doing these classes, um, but starting in October, we're changing the schedule. We're gonna go the first and third week of every month, um, and there's two reasons for that, right? For those of you that live on Oahu, we are opening a new store in Kahala, 
and I got to go cook over there. So that's one. But the second, and you can come visit me too, by the way. If, I, if you come, come say hi. I'm from the store. I'll come and we'll talk story. Um, and secondly, you know, we're getting ready to go into the holiday season. So I got lots of turkeys to take care of. And I got lots of pumpkin pies and prime ribs and all we got to take care of. So um, we are going to be adjusting the schedule a little bit. Um, that means I, the pressure's on me because I got to make each class twice as good. But um, we are going to the first and third. And we're still looking forward to having everyone there. And we're still going to have a lot of fun. So just well, want to let you guys know that that's coming up. up. Um, so we'll see everyone next week. We, we will, will see, see you next week. week. We, we have, have one more week in September. So we'll see you next week. Starting in October is when we're going to go. The following week is going to go first and third. So we'll see you then. We're trying to figure out what we are going to do for next week. By the way, if you have any ideas, please send it to us now or send us an email. And then uh, we'll get everyone the recipe and the ingredients. So with that, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys that you cook with us tonight. You guys are going to have a really cool meal. Don't forget to put the lemon juice, the lime juice in there. And uh, please, everyone go get some ulu. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone.